Bejenov is on pole for the first oval race of the 2016 Hart Can-Am Series. Ali Nelson on his outside in the 96 Denali as Bejenov heads it off in out of turn number two with the, a commanding lead over James Shelley, who started third and has currently slipped into second well past the 96, who's really struggling on that very outside line, Davidson. In the nine, after failing to even start for the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, damn near wrecked at the end of lap number one there, nearly spinning the car, as Gerald Reddington is at the front of the field, currently passing Shelley and Bejenov to get the race lead three wide. And he will have the lead as we come to end lap number two. Actually, Bejenov might have just barely led that lap, but either way, Reddington has the lead. Now some contact between Viznovsky and the 13 as they shoot up the racetrack towards the new refurbished walls on this half mile dirt track. Despite the hard racing, a fairly clean start, Gavin Moore off off tracks it there down in turn number one manages to get and save that car from an unfortunate wall hit there on the exit of the two that has claimed so many victims in the prior arc races at uh, Drummond a uh, Carl and Dumian making his way forward in that one car he finished second a Canadian Time Motorsports track the park trying to back up that run with yet another podium if, he, if at all possible, Alex Wheeler up his inside though in the 69 in that target machine. He will get that spot. Bill Littlejohn, my goodness. Was he out of shape coming off that corner? Manages to save it. Really nice job by him. New contender up at the front is Johnny Appleseed in the double zero. Driving as per usual for Stringer's wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men team as he get tries to get the lead from the 99 needs to be able to clear Reddington in order to get that spot yes he does Viznovsky is also making his way up into the mix could see him lead um, not too long from now Lily Gordon the in the 83 is currently running fourth Shelley still maintains fifth after starting in third Sawyer girl the 2014 winner is currently in dead last kind of a surprise uh, to see him not do so well this weekend. Qualified very poorly so far, has gone absolutely nowhere, is not even able to compete with Lu the likes of Lucas Knight, the BC native, uh, who is in his second ever start, and Daniel Voiles, who we all know from the dirt track race where he won last year from Indiana State Fairgrounds and then proceeded to put it in the pit wall. So, I mean, congratulations for that. New leader at the front of the field, Mike Viznovsky in the 41, the 98 of Nick Guerra just passed Johnny Appleseed to make his way in the second. These drivers really able to get good runs off the inside of turns one and two on these new tires. Of course, we, we will see that go away as we progress in, into the race. It's going to get harder and harder to pass. So if you want to get your way to the front, you should probably do that around now. Couple of rows of three wide racing here. Santa Coors, the Dutch driver, stuck between Brandon Kraft and Ryder Smith, backs out of that one and hurry. Benoit Irvine in the 15 is in a, in a blaze racing sandwich between Michael Kane and Luko Brovac. Always terrifying, I imagine, to be underneath the erratic driver, Michael Kane. Uh, Benoit Irvine, the French driver, trying to make a name for himself in the North American stock car tour. Uh, he's had a history of doing well in endurance races. He won uh, an hour-long race at his local track in France and has now come across the ocean to participate in the Hart Can-Am series. See what it can do as we continue on throughout the seven race campaign. Mark Nutt in the 50 is reporting a problem to his crew as we speak. He's gonna have to bring that thing down pit road, but first he's gotta get there. He's on the outside of the racetrack, nearly makes some contact with Bill Littlejohn, does make some contact with Fullerton and nearly causes a huge stack up onto the back straightaway, does manage to get down pit road though. And he, if this will likely cost him a few laps as to fix whatever um, is ailing him as these drivers continue to lap this track at a, uh, in just over 20 seconds. Ian Lasovich is inside the 21 of Sidney Krasa trying to make a move. So your girl makes it three wide. He's trying to pick off some spots here. Heading into three, sliding up the track, and huge crash there as Sawyer Girl gets sent up into the air. Krasta in the 21 
completely destroyed, nearly rolled over. Fullerton, Alex Tanker collected. Uh, that's, I believe, that's Wanderly, the Brazilian driver in the 16. Skyla Johnson might have got a piece of that as well. Here's another angle of it, this time focusing on Spencer Fullerton from way afar. Krasta definitely nearly sent over there in that 21 car as uh, Sikuli also gets a little bit of a piece of that. He drives away. Johnson avoided it as best as she could. I don't, I don't think she has any damage whatsoever, really, in that 29. She should be good to go for the remainder of the race. Elva Wanderly might have to pit that car for a little bit of repairs as we're now under caution. Wisnowski waiting on the green flag. He gets it there. Goes to the inside to try and defend the double zero of Johnny Appleseed, who gets a great launch on the restart on the outside. Uh, is not able to challenge the 41 down to the back straight away, though. 41 able to hold on for now, at least for this very first lap after the retaking of the green flag. The 41 goes all the way up to the wall, though, and that might hurt. Uh, the 41 heading into one. Johnny Appleseed might take another look. Gerald Reddington. Back into third position, he's certainly not done. His reign t of terror on this field after winning at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. A podium finish here could give him a truly massive points lead. Uh, heading into round three at Scotia Speed World. Prudence Littlejohn has cracked at the top four. Great job by her. Of course, there's a lot of dirt track and short track racing experience uh, amongst her and her father, and I'm sure she's been taking notes from Bill Littlejohn, although uh, although Bill himself did not have too many good runs on the short tracks last season. Uh, Prudence Littlejohn not in any particular hurry to uh, make a lot of moves as Nick Guerra gets into the back end of the 31. Great save by Prudy as she looks to continue with the top five run. Look for her to challenge for the win later on in the race. Nicholas Guerra continues to race very aggressively with Shelly and Reddington. Shelly gives him a tap off of turn number four. Guerra again saves it but loses two spots. Reddington back around him in the 99. Shelly might be able to get that position back, but the 98 still coming back up the inside. He is not done and has no reservations about going for positions early on. John King going for a pass on Lily Gordon in the 83. A little bit of contact between the two of them. Crew turns three and four. The old one slid up the track and they nearly, uh, that was very nearly reminiscent of Sawyer Girls and Sydney Cross's huge accident around lap number 20. They continue clean and green though. Uh, that's the 01 passing Zayden Davidson in the nine car Santa Cruz trying to follow the 0-1 through if at all possible might be able to through the corner yeah definitely that's Johnny Martinez that just went by Jim Mack now looking to challenge Henrietta Fitzwater in the 61 Mike Doan trying to make up some spots still going for his first career win after nearly winning the champ the 2015 Hart Pro Series championship leading uh, the point stand is coming into the final race but being caught up in several unfortunate events that took him out of contention for the championship and eventually, uh, which would eventually go to Sean Morrison, a driver that did not return for the 2016 Hart Can-Am Series. Bejian, off after starting on pole, has lost some spots, trying to uh, get that car back going again. He might have to make an adjustment should we have another uh, caution because he doesn't d just does not seem to be able to run the bottom as well. Uh, as well as many of his competitors. He's stuck on the top line and can't seem to do anything from where he is. Nicholas Guerra's constant aggressive driving style early on seems to have paid off for him. He's certainly got a very strong car and he currently holds on to the lead after pa passing both Mike Wisnowski and Johnny Appleseed for that position. Wisnowski still taking a peek on the inside. He can just continue to get that car turned on the bottom. He's got to be careful that he doesn't use up too much of his stuff or else he might not have anything left uh, for the final few laps. At the completion of the first 50 of the 137 lap race, both of the DJ Harris Motorsports cars looking quite strong, oh, each of them in the top six. 
Um, currently sitting in front of Gerald Reddington, who continues to go back and forth between holding a podium spot and the back end of the top 10 has never fallen any further back than that, and that's awfully impressive for the 99 car. But it'll be interesting to see whether the 36 and the 69 team up um, towards the end of this race to try and challenge Nick Guerra and whoever else happens to be at the front end of this pack. Nick Guerra putting on a master's class on defense and how to keep the lead of the race. He's consistently posting some of the fastest laps of any driver on the track. The Texas native driving the Sleep Country machine for Vanilla Motorsports uh, is a rookie to the two Hark competitions. He competed a little bit in the Utica Home Track Series, but um, without too, too much success, I don't think. Uh, looking to make a name for himself and Harkis Prudence Littlejohn making her way to the front now with a huge charge from outside the top five now up to second well nearly up to second put back to third by a strong outside charge by the double zero off the turn number four uh, but now they're three wide for the lead potentially no Guerra again pulls away on this on the straights he's really got some uh, some horsepower under the hood of that number 98 machine the 31 of Prudence Littlejohn continuing to try and challenge Appleseed, who once again really gets a good launch off of turn number four. Bill Littlejohn continues to not have that great of a day, sitting around where his car number is as far as position-wise. Mike Dome just went off the road. He's got rear end damage. Not sure if that's going to bring out a caution as he is, was well off the racing surface, but we're going to have to take a look at that. Uh, for sure. Doan had made his way up into the sixth position. He was stuck in a three wide race be be between Alex Wheeler, Reddington, and himself. He just spun himself off of Reddington's bumper trying to get into turn three far too hard. Surprised he didn't take Reddington with him. Uh, crashed into the outside wall but ke kept going. Actually nearly rolled the car there. Got some serious height off of the uh, turn three banking. He will continue though and we will continue under green actually, as that was well off the racing surface. Lily Gordon is currently running 37th to second to last car on the racetrack, only beating Mark Nutt out. Nutt is three laps down, Lily Gordon two laps down. She also had to pit under this um, lengthy green flag period that we've had since the first caution at lap 20. Past the halfway mark and after much struggling, Johnny Appleseed managed to retake the lead from the 98 of Nick Guerra. These two are quite clearly, I believe, the two fastest cars on the racetrack at the moment. Other drivers have made their presence known at the front. Wheeler, Reddington, Little John, but none have been able to hold on to the lead for any significant period of time other than these two drivers that we're looking at right now. Here comes Alex Wheeler with a charge on the low side of the double zero. Appleseed originally tried to squeeze him all the way down in turn number two, but Wheeler now trying to get past before we hit the exit of turn four where Appleseed really hammers on the gas pedal and gets that thing uh, going. He put a couple of car lengths between himself and Wheeler. They're just on that straightaway alone. Very impressive job at the double zero to hold off uh, the other cars despite the, uh, the other drivers having perhaps the optimal line on this racetrack. It really does take a lap or two to make a pass stick here at Autodrome Drummond as I believe we're under caution actually. Yeah, the pace car is out. I'm not sure what the reason for the caution is. No one actually crashed. We're hearing it's just debris actually. Really weird. Huh. Restart coming with 45 laps to go. Appleseed on lap number 93 of 137 at this point, Wheeler is currently sitting in second, but here comes Nick Ware with another charge in the 98 Sleep Country machine, trying to get that position going. He's not going to be able to do it, that's for sure. Wheeler's going to get a great run off of turn four, as many drivers seem to. So hard to make a pass on the inside through there, much easier down in turn one if you can uh, wait, Henrietta Fitzwater might have tapped the left side door of the 31, but he, but she will actually make her way into the fourth position, past the 31. Reddington continues to be in sixth position. Really impressive job by him to be so consistent here, and he might challenge for the lead. 
yet again if uh, if he can make his way past Guerra and up to the back bumper of Appleseed. That Mr. Subcar has come to life. Fitzwater now driving by the target. Number 69 of, I don't know why he's still sponsored by Target. There are no Targets in Canada anymore, you pleb. But Fitzwater, now trying to sweep in front of the double zero. Oh, no, no, don't worry about that car there. No, don't worry at all. As Appleseed just got bodies checked by the 61 out of the way. Fitzwater is now in control in the top position. Wheeler trying to look for seconds, needs to squeeze between the 61 and the double zero because Appleseed has all the beans off of turn number four. No, sort of got him. Yeah, definitely got him. Wheeler got him out of turn number four and is now looking like he's going to have the lead into turn three. Going to sweep up in front of the 61. Might do the same thing. No, lots of, lots of space to make that pass there. Nick Guerra. And the 98 again challenging the double zero. This time instead of challenging for the lead though, he's challenging for the last podium spot. A little bit disappointing I imagine. Gavin Moore in the 10 has suddenly appeared just as he did at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park in these final laps. Suddenly he has uh, something to challenge these guys with. Gavin Moore, if he can continue like this for the rest of the season, could very easily challenge for the championship victory, but, he's, but he still has to worry, at this point he still has to worry about Reddington, who's currently sitting just one position behind him. Aiden Shepard though in the 14 Tim Hortons car is up the inside of the 99, trying to squeeze between them, not able to do so, and here comes Reddington with, again, another huge charge. Off of turn number four, gonna get him easily into turn one. Reddington really had to get out of the gas to avoid running off into the grass, just as Mike Doan did earlier on. Still can't believe that he, he didn't spin off with the 72 despite the contact to his left rear quarter panel. Joshua Sekuliaza had a pretty unremarkable day, got involved in that early lap 20 accident and now gets spins himself off of the 50 of Mark Nutt and a light impact into the wall he goes. He will get that thing spun around that but That will bring out a caution the third of today's race. The 69 obsolete target car of Alex Wheeler retakes the green flag. Around 30 laps to go at this point. Johnny Appleseed immediately gets down, down to the inside. No sort of defense there by the 69. Kind of surprised not to see the 69 go down to, de to try and defend that lead. Appleseed with, an, uh, uh, with a poor run off of turn four. Seems he can't do what he always does, cracking the throttle on that in on, on the inside. Not sure whether there's just a lack of grip down there or whether there's more banking up top that I just can't see or what's going on there, but whatever. Uh, Wheeler goes all the way up to the wall and is again alongside the double zero. Alcide still hasn't completed the pass on Wheeler, and I think that's that shows just how strong Wheeler's car is because Appleseed's been fairly dominant so far in this race. Aiden Shepard suddenly decides to appear into the podium in that Buick number 14, trying to get a position from the 69. Isn't quite able to get it. He, he's going to have the optimal line heading into one, though. Yeah, he's got it easily. Easily Aiden Shepard into the second spot. Henrietta Fitzwater continues holding on to fourth. Nick Guerra still holding on to that top five. Could see him make another charge at Appleseed in the final few laps, but might just be saving his tires at this point, as uh, is Prudence Littlejohn uh, likely. James Shelley suddenly into the top seven in the 11 car, goes around Reddington, immediately goes around Prudence Littlejohn as well. Could see him up at the front in just a few laps. These guys may not have cars to compete for the victory, but I imagine they're still having plenty of fun. Uh, back at the, uh, back in the 20s, uh, the Matthew Nicholson, the 43 of Matthew Nicholson trying to make his way by Mark Nutt in the 50. He's a, he's a few laps down, so of course that's not going to count for a position, but it's going to put a gap between himself and some of his other rivals. Bill Littlejohn on the bottom, sliding up the track, managed to get, to get the pass done before getting into Lucas Knight. As Johnny uh, Martinez, I believe, has gotten into the wall in the 22 car, uh, he, he was all the way up in the dirt, kicking up a lot of it. 
uh, there on the exit of turn number two and the caution is out so something must have happened with Martinez off of the corner there. Very, very similar to Sekuli's incident. The 22 just ran into turn one too hard, got into Gavin Moore and Brandon Krasta and lightly spun up into the wall. Got that car go back going. He's gonna lose a ton of positions though. Ends up at the tail end of the top 20 after nearly competing to get into the top 10 when, when his spin occurred. Appleseed just hold, has to hold on for another 17 laps. Pretty solid restart by the double zero. Aiden Shepard not able to take a look on the bottom eight. Uh, Alex Wheeler in the 69 is though. And the target machine once again going up towards the front. Gerald Rennington also along the bottom. Not event. He's going to lose a couple of positions here, but he might be able to get them back in turn one if he holds on. James Shelley trying to follow him through a bunch of these guys and easily passes Guerra and Fitzwater in the same corner and is suddenly right on the tail end of the 99. Swings it out as far wide as he possibly can to try and get a position through turn four without having it relinquished by the time they get to the start finish line. It's kind of stuck in a bit of a box though behind Reddington and just flies by him though. In the 11 car, James Shelley suddenly um, showing his stuff at the end of this race. He might have made a good decision by waiting until this point. He's got a set of of fairly okay tires, I imagine, from just chilling out at the, uh, just in the uh, mid-teens as far as position-wise uh, for most of today, and is now up the inside of the 69, needs to sweep in front of him if he's going to hold on to second and prevent Wheeler from a massive comeback off of turn number four. Yeah, Wheeler's going to get that uh, position back temporarily the 11 up the track once again and he's got second Prudence Littlejohn um, currently sitting back in fourth position in the Gypsum Express number 31 the black and pink machine she wasn't able to win a race last year really desperately wants to try and win in this Hart can -Am series season with the way she's boxed in right now that's going to be hard to do no they're actually under caution right now and I believe this is the fifth caution of the race. Appleseed back under the pace car with Shelly, the new second place runner. Once again, the accident originates from the tail end of the pack where drivers with ill handling race cars desperately to try to make up some positions towards the tail end of this race. Elba Wanderley gets the worst of that. She runs into turn one too hard and spins that car. Lily Gordon also got a piece. Mark Nutt, some more damage to add to that machine. He's currently three laps down and really needs someone to go out of the race in order to even gain a position. So kind of a real shame for him. No matter what he does, he's probably gonna end up with uh, around a 30th place run. His car off the track in just eight laps to go. Appleseed with a beautiful restart over James Shelley, putting several car lengths between himself and the rest of the field. Shelley really closes in. Shelley's brakes uh, probably, again, a little bit fresher than Appleseed, who's consistently been at the front all race long, has led the most laps of this race, nearing uh, around 50 to 60 laps led so far. Shelley takes a peek into turn number one and gets the lead. If the caution is to fly in a lap or two, we're going to a green-white checker. So Appleseed is got, has got to be worried for that. He's got to race every lap like it's the last lap because you don't want to end up on the outside um, coming into a green-white checkered. Shelly into the race lead. Prudence Littlejohn currently sitting third. My goodness, that was close to something pretty bad heading on to the back straightaway. Double zero. Amazing save uh, for Appleseed. He continues in second. He didn't really even lose time to the Shelly. What? Like, what? How did you not lose time? You nearly spun your car. You mug. But here comes Appleseed with another charge on Shelly in the 11, heading into turn three. He's gonna stay behind. Probably a good decision. Otherwise, uh, Appleseed could have lost several car lengths there. Heading into turn number one. Little John still sitting in third. The pace cars back out though. And we have less than five laps to go, so we're going to end up going to a green-white checkered, and that is Appleseed's worst nightmare. He's going to be starting in row one for that green-white checkered, but on the outside. And that 
must be a nightmare because their tires are going to have some time to cool and everyone's going to be able to run the bottom and everyone's going to be going for it as well. He's going to be st stuck in a box, likely. Lucas Knight, the British Columbian driver, trying to get by Zayden Davidson, the Aussie, but gets up into his quarter panel and that sends the eight car around. All, an already ill handling car gets some damage there. He's going to have some time to likely make some adjustments, some final adjustments, maybe repair some of that uh, rear and, and right side damage um, before the green white checkered. It'll be interesting to see whether he can pick off uh, some spots during those final two laps. Shelly has the lead. Heading into the green white checkered, we're going to see some wild racing here, I imagine. Everyone going for it, still 32 cars. Uh, racing for position here as Appleseed loses a position falls to third He needs to get down to the bottom as quickly as possible But he's still stuck on the outside of the 31 and Prudence Little John suddenly shows her stuff as we come to the white flag Shelly with the several car length Advantage Appleseed trying desperately to get back in a second to hold on to a podium at least that's gonna be a very tough effort by the double zero if he's able to do so here comes the 31 into the final corner uh, going for a move on the 11 he needs she needs to get up the 11 gets into the back of the 31 but the 31 of Prudence Littlejohn will win the race after performing a perfect slide job off of turn number four and and the Littlejohn family will finally celebrate in victory lane a an incredible job by Prudence Littlejohn to get past the very strong car of James Shelley on that final lap, somehow holding uh, holding on to her car, not losing control off of turn number four, and bringing it to the line. Shelley forced to accept defeat, finishes second in the 11 car, gave it all he had in those final few laps, tried to hold off Little John, and gave her a bump off of turn number four, but nothing was enough and he loses by a car length. Henrietta Fitzwater finishes third in the 61. A great uh, effort by the uh, driver of that Mr. Submachine to get, uh, get up where she was at the end of that race. Gerald Reddington manages to pick up a few spots on that green light checker, going from ninth to fourth. Very impressive job by him, and he will certainly hold on to the points lead. In fact, he will have a pretty big points lead heading into Scotia Speed World of over 10 points. Johnny Appleseed in the double zero manages to finish uh, fifth, barely holding on to that position after holding uh, off Alex Wheeler, who got sixth. Nick, Nick Guerra in seventh, finishes nine tenths of a second back. Aiden Shepard um, also uh, uh, finishes inside the top ten, finishing eighth. Gavin Moore, ninth spot, and Ryder Smith rounds out the top ten.